Skyrim is the game that will never die. In all its history, there's never been a point when Skyrim wasn't relevant in one way or another. There's a reason why Skyrim content creators remain at the top of their game, why mod authors can continue working on incredible mods, and why Bethesda continue to re-release Skyrim on every platform imaginable. Skyrim is the game that will never die. I honestly feel even Elder Scrolls 6 may never be able to pass the level of which Skyrim has hit. Even if it's better in every way, I do think it'll be hard pressed to have the incredible lifespan that Skyrim has had. Because beyond the re-releases, beyond the extensive mods, there's a history and a community bond that ties fans of Skyrim together in an incredible way. For the 10 year anniversary, I wanted to sit down and revisit Skyrim for the first time, off stream alone and experience this game again. But not just that, I also wanted to mod the game to its absolute limits while remaining playable, as many game changing graphic enhancing mods that I could fit into Skyrim while still being able to actually play the game. To shine a light on just how much Skyrim has changed in 10 years, how much the community has done and to show exactly why this game can simply never die. To show what Skyrim truly is 10 years later. To do this, I originally followed an incredibly comprehensive guide of a lot of mods that graphically overhaul Skyrim. I'll link that in the description and it took me a few hours, but this was my base, a nicely graphically overhauled Skyrim and boy does it look good. The next step was to slowly add mods as and when I thought of something that would be cool. If I were playing the game and thought, man, I really need to make some money, I'd go on Nexus and find myself mods like Winstad Mine or the Landlord mod. Maybe my wife looks a bit out of place on a new castle home mod, so I get her a new outfit. She looks way better. Oh, fuck, I forgot I had that installed. And so on and so forth, you get it. This video isn't a mod spotlight however, but I will try my best to link every additional mod in the description along with the original guide so you could theoretically have every single mod I used and have the exact same build, tried and tested, by me. My idea was to be at a point where I couldn't tell what was vanilla and what wasn't anymore, and I think I achieved it. Having not played vanilla Skyrim in some time, I really had a hard time discerning what was and wasn't the base game, which felt like mission complete. So join me as we hop back into Skyrim, 10 years later. The start of any adventure like this is your character. Of course, I had installed the Live Another Life mod because, my god, that intro sequence I've seen almost 100 times by now, and Live Another Life is an incredibly interesting way to delve back into Skyrim, but it wouldn't be a 10 years later video if I skipped the original intro entirely. Hey, you. Finally awake. Live Another Life starts you out in a dungeon with a shrine to Mara in the corner. By selecting it, you're able to choose from an insane amount of starting points in Skyrim for your new character. I'm sure though you already know about this mod, it's one of the all-time classics. I honestly had a tough time deciding what to go with, but I went with something simple, something different to what I normally do. I was a traveller coming from a distant land on a ship, docking in solitude. Judging by my clothes, I was a noble of some kind, perhaps I'd lost all my riches and my home due to war or something. I don't know, I try to roleplay as much as possible, just work with me here. This allowed me to go off and choose my own path through this world. I decided my own fate and what person I was going to be. Starting in Solitude rather than Helgen and taking that usual route through Riverwood and Whiterun was really refreshing. It makes the game feel different. Due to how Skyrim is built and structured, just starting somewhere new means that your entire character journey will shift, and it's a joy to re-explore that from a new angle. The core story in this game, however, is the story of you discovering your heritage as the Dragonborn, someone born in mortal form but with the soul of a dragon within them. The story itself, as we all know, is pretty basic, but the path that you take shapes your journey. The fun in Skyrim isn't following the main story through to conclusion, but deviating from that, building your very own character journey. I know some people who've never even finished the main quest just because of how low-key it can be. The game never really nudges you in any particular direction, it just lets you go off and discover, explore who you want to be. That takes us to the different arcs you can play in this game. You pretty much choose where you go and what you do. There are plenty of story arcs in this game to work alongside the so-called main quest of stopping Alduin. Heading out, you can choose to side with and experience so many faction storylines, from the Dark Brotherhood to the Thieves' Guild, the Mages' College of Winterhold, and even choosing size in the Civil War ravaging the Skyrim, allowing you to take control of the politics and shape the land depending on the side that you choose. My journey through Skyrim this time around took me in so many interesting directions. Usually I play as a thief type character, someone working in the shadows, stealing, working for coin, but 
secretly with a heart of gold, wanting to help people, being a hero at the end of the day, that sort of thing. Almost somewhat like Geralt of Rivia, if he were a stealthy thief, sort of. This time, like I said, I arrived in Skyrim as a traveller, getting off a ship after a long few days at sea in the city of Solitude, the capital of Skyrim, looking for work, looking for shelter, and looking to make some money. I spent some time after resting in a tavern, doing some jobs around town, people who were owed debts, that sort of thing, until I got mixed up in a thieving attempt gone wrong and ended up getting my hands dirty for the first time, which somewhat shaped my journey moving forward. I decided to sign up next for the Imperial Legion, a questline I'd never actually played before. I only ever did the Civil War questline once, and I'm pretty sure that was in 2011, and I sided with the Stormcloaks anyway. In doing that, it sent me down a rabbit hole of quests and battles to take back Skyrim for the Imperials, defending Whiterun, sieging Windhelm, and finally killing Ulfric. Stormcloak. It felt like I was truly involved in what was happening and finally made a name for myself, but after all was done I left my post as Legate of the Imperial Legion as I'd gained enough experience to go my own way, discover my own adventures. Also I installed a mod to fix Whiterun because that shit remains in ruins for the entire vanilla game after that quest, which is honestly mental. I'd heard rumours about an attack in Helgen, supposedly something happened there and nobody was man enough to find out, except for me. I ended up buying a horse eventually at the Whiterun stables, and I took a ride over to Helgen, and lo and behold, it was in ruin. And away from the destruction, I caught a glimpse of my first dragon. Seeing it this way around, rather than being in the fight at Helgen itself, is such an interesting way to start the main quest. You're just someone living in this world, and you discover it as and when you ride up to Helgen. It's really refreshing as someone who's played this game so many times. This also triggers yet another mod, Helgen Reborn, a set of quests dedicated to rebuilding Helgen into a prosperous town, which I dedicated a lot of my time to in the early days of this playthrough. It takes you across the world, making deals with people, fighting in cage fights, gathering resources, and uncovering old enemies of your newfound allies, all to end up with Helgen looking incredible once again, with your own home in the courtyard. It's a fully voiced mod, and it's really, really good. It's one of the older ones, but I absolutely love it. I'd come a long way at this point and literally hadn't even touched the main quest, other than talking with the Isle of Whiterun and defending their city from a dragon, but I'd yet to answer the call from the Greybeards, and I felt that that time was now. Heading up to High Hrothgar is a new journey. I decided to don some travelling attire and make my way up the many steps, which opens up a whole new adventure, a whole new story to unfold. Discovering who you are as the Dragonborn, which up until now, I hadn't done. I was just a regular guy. Sure, I was doing some extraordinary things, but I wasn't yet the Dragonborn. After learning of being Dragonborn, it felt right to learn some magic, hone my skills in the way of the voice, and also hone my skills as a mage. So I headed to Winterhold, an old hold lost mostly to the sea, with the college perched on the edge of a large cliff. I also had a mod which changed a lot of the college itself to make it more magical. Immersive College of Winterhold, it's called, which I have to say, did transform my time in this story storyline from the way that it normally feels. After becoming the Archmage at the end of that questline, I handed over the title to Tolfdir, which is part of the recently mentioned mod, and headed on my way. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, so I have this mod installed that makes fights more gory, but often it just absolutely fucks up the NPCs, like, holy shit, what even happened here? <laughs> Thankfully, there's a spell to fix it, but goddamn, it's messy. I went on to learn more of dragons, to discover the blades, to help Esburn and Delphine. In doing so, it leads you across many quests to infiltrate the Thalmor HQ, trek through old Dwemer ruins in search of an Elder Scroll, and finally to Sovngarde to kill the World Eater himself. I may have glazed over a lot of my time during this playthrough, but I wanted to hit on some of the main points. Fighting Alduin felt like a conclusion to my current journey. It was amazing coming face to face after so long. I felt like my character was ready. After gaining experience in the Imperial Legion, after learning of being Dragonborn, honing my magic skills at the college, helping people around the province, and reading an Elder Scroll, I was finally ready to take down this dragon. Completing this quest was the end of an era, but not the end for my character. Because of the way Skyrim is structured, you never feel like finishing the main quest is the end. In a lot of games, even really great RPGs like The Witcher, when you're done with the main story, doing side stuff can feel a tad empty. It's kind of an accompaniment to the main story rather than something independent of it. But it never feels like that in Skyrim. Defeating Alduin is just one story in a world full of individual independent stories. Ones to discover and ones you make up yourself. I decided to focus on my personal life after finishing the main quest. I used a mod called LC Build Your Own Noble Home, which allowed you to create a whole town to call your own, with a castle at the very top. 
This uses the Hearthfire DLC building system and integrates it into the mod. In doing so, I had a town, a market, a temple, a whole castle. It felt earned after so long of fighting. I married Yazolda, a girl I met in Whiterun some time back, and I adopted a kid called Blaze, someone who I'd met just as I docked in Skyrim right at the very start, at a farm outside Solitude. I remember thinking to myself I'd make sure this kid had a home when I was able to provide, and it felt incredibly satisfying to have built myself up to this point. With the income from the town and my mining business nearby in Morthal, thanks to the Winstad Mine mod, I'd built on my riches once again, and eventually that led to me again longing for adventure, to go off and discover both the Dawnguard and Dragonborn DLCs for everything they had to offer. And that's just one of the many infinite routes you can take in Skyrim. Of course, mods enhancing that further. My character felt like my own. Although I was playing in these preset stories with preset characters, it felt unique to me. As much as I've played this game time and time again, every single time it can feel new based on your choices, your roots, your allegiances, and your character's disposition to particular events. And it's all completely up to you. That's the magic of Skyrim. Another core part of Skyrim are the followers. I had a few mods installed, I believe, one that allows for more people to become followers, and another mod that allows for multiple followers at once, allowing you to have whole parties of followers. I had different followers for different stories, so it felt like I was making friends along the way, and I had different people around me for different situations. Lydia accompanied me for quite a bit, and we parted ways as I headed for the College of Winterhold, where I had new friends to follow me, classmates who helped me during that period, and I went back to Lydia for the finale of the main quest, where Lydia... For for crying out loud, why does this keep happening? And I like that followers weave into your own personal journey. You can choose who you want to be with, who accompanies you on this long journey through Skyrim. It's, it's an incredibly interesting way to add to the world building and character storytelling. You really feel this overall sense of growth, an experience that you make your own and a journey that is unique. It's really what Skyrim manages so well, giving you the tools, giving you the stories, but allowing for as much player input as possible, giving you the sandbox to create unforgettable and personal stories of growth, companionship, heroism, and triumph. Now let's not beat around the bush, it's not like the game hasn't aged at all. Even with mods, I can understand why some people might find it difficult to play Skyrim if they've never touched them before. The gameplay itself was a tad old school even when it came out, but honestly, to me, that's what only adds to Skyrim as an overall experience. When getting into combat situations, there's no fancy animations or counter kills, however instead it feels somewhat like a tabletop RPG. You roll a dice and you do damage, the enemy does the same. There's a bit more involved, but it feels like your stats against their stats, and whoever's better wins. Sure, there's some challenge involved, like moving away, using the right spells or shouts, but for some reason, to me, there's something very Dungeons & Dragons about enemy encounters in Skyrim, and of course, that's something that's stayed pretty similar in Elder Scrolls history since the very start. It's just somewhat simplified and modernized in Skyrim. The actual structuring of combat is decently simple, but you do have a ton of ways to tackle things. You've got a variety of weapons, from one-handed swords, maces, and axes, to two-handed greatswords, bows, and magic, or a combination of all of them. You're able to build up your character the way that you want them to be in terms of gear, using light, medium, or heavy armor, found or crafted, and improved to your liking, as well as enchanted as well, and so much more. Skyrim offers player choice in terms of all of your kit and your progression. Sure, the skill tree itself is pretty bland, I will admit that. It doesn't really compare to some of the more in-depth older Elder Scrolls titles, or even some more recent RPGs. It's maybe one of the core areas in which Skyrim falters, but where it doesn't falter is allowing the player the freedom to choose. If you want to hone your skills in light armor, you can do that. If you want to focus on pickpocketing, you can do that too. It's your choice how you want to play your character, without being locked into a preset class. I know for a lot of people that's somewhat of a turnoff, given the more in-depth RPGs offer you plenty of class choice, but I quite like the structure of letting the player master all of it if they so choose. That said, I don't mind the other kind of structuring either, they both have their place, I just really like the freedom that Skyrim allows, never railroading you and never putting you in a box. But as I was saying, the combat isn't hugely complex or stylish, but the process of taking enemies down feels fun. It feels like you're relying on your skills and gear on a very base level. I did have some mods that definitely helped with visuals, however, special additional animations as well as decapitations of some enemies, add a nice level of satisfaction to the combat that isn't really in vanilla. 
Exploring the world is also very tabletop RPG-esque, which is something that I really enjoy. It does feel like you're experiencing a D&D campaign or something, coming across caves inside which you could really find anything. Sometimes it's a small cave with a bear or something, a small piece of loot. Sometimes though, you can find a whole cavern with tunnels and rooms which is full of bandits or vampires, occasionally finding notes on people which evolve into actual quests, which is another incredible thing about Skyrim. Nothing is railroaded. It's like everything you can ever do exists at once, and you can come across quests in pretty much any order that you'd like. Sometimes you can finish a quest without even realising you've started a quest. Then heading into a town you realise you actually helped a ton of people without knowing that you did. Then you're able to claim those rewards and hear more about what it is you actually did. Skyrim's sense of non-linearity really is something you often don't see in modern games, especially working so very well. The dungeons themselves are pretty diverse. Even when they're similar in appearance, they often have varied mechanics and puzzles for you to work through. Dwemma ruins are often harder, proving long and tougher experiences, crossing from these old mechanical ruins filled with old dwarven tech into Falmer territory with beasts and aggressive skulking enemies, traps and poison. You've got the regular caves which tend to be easier, with less difficult enemy types, usually bandits, raiders, frostbite spiders, then the old Norse tombs where you find Draugr of varying degrees of difficulty, along with some dragon priests sometimes which can prove a decent challenge to fight against. Exploring different dungeons is a huge part of Skyrim's level design and honestly, it's something that never really gets old for me. Heading into a cave or catacomb to find loot and fight enemies for quest reasons or just for fun is always a worthwhile experience. The player is always rewarded for delving as deep as they can with either loot, lore, or quests. Dragons. Skyrim's big gimmick, if you want to call it that, is dragons, the dragonborn, dragon shouts. I honestly love this so much, even though the dragons aren't strictly dragons because they only have two legs and their little front feet are attached to their wings, that makes them wyverns. Dragons have four legs and the wings are independent of their legs, but that's fine. I love the dragons, and not just fighting them, not just the fact they're cool as shit and we literally get to absorb their souls, not just that, but their lore is so damn fascinating. The fact that the dragons are some of the most intelligent beings in Elder Scrolls lore, they know so much, they've seen so much, and even the evil ones have a super interesting perspective. Conversations with Alduin allows you to learn little snippets of the history of Tamriel, as these beings were among the very first to inhabit the world that we know of. They use their knowledge to fight. It's not simple fire breathing, it's a new inventive take on it. They use words of power to fight their foes. I mean, how damn cool is that as a concept? Dragons use the power of knowledge itself, of language, to fight with. I don't know, I just think that's so incredibly cool. And not just the dragons, but the fact that you, as the dragonborn, get to learn these words of power. We get to speak to the Greybeards, train as a Dover, speak with Parthenax, who I didn't kill by the way, and learn these different interesting words that give us new interesting abilities. It's such a cool gameplay mechanic. The game doesn't need it at all. Without it, without the dragons, the shouts, all of it, the game would still be one of the greatest RPGs, but with it, I feel it tears it away from previous Elder Scrolls games and other RPGs too. It feels incredibly unique and gives Skyrim a very special identity that I absolutely adore. Skyrim itself is a wonderful province and has a lot of diverse areas. Exploring it feels so engaging, especially when traveling by foot or on horseback. Seeing the snowy landscape turn into a tundra or woodland with the sun beaming through the trees is such an incredible way to ground you in this world. That too is only enhanced by obsidian weathers and seasons, which adjust the weather to be more varied and interesting, as well as being seasonal. Winter is more snowy, while summer is more sunny. It's basic, but it adds a lot to the world itself. Heading into colder areas and riding your horse around the snowy terrain does wonders to immerse you in Skyrim as a province known for its snow. The blizzards closer to Windhelm are incredibly intense. The tundra around Whiterun is large and spacious with nothing but grass fields for miles in every direction, and the woodland areas around Falkreath and the Rift are dense, especially with a few mods that increase density of trees and foliage to make it feel like a whole different game. Riding or walking through these areas with their orange and yellow leaves just works so well to ground you in this space, to feel like you're living in it. Talking about living in the world though, another great element is the interiors of buildings. When you've been on a long journey across the world and night begins to fall or maybe rain sets in, coming across a tavern is just so damn cool. I don't know why it is, but when it's raining and you stop at a tavern and you listen to the music being played, talk to the locals, get a room for the night before setting out the next morning, 
it's just so damn incredibly immersive. Immersion is the number one selling point of Skyrim, and there's nothing quite as immersive as that. And I mean, as well as the towns and villages, you have the major city halls in Whiterun, Solitude, Riften, Markarth, and Windhelm. Sure, none of them are quite Novigrad, and don't get me wrong, I'd love to see a full-blown city like that in a future Elder Scrolls game, but they have their charm. Whiterun is the classic, it's the main hub for everything. You go here to sell your stuff, to see people, to buy new gear. Whiterun is the main place you visit, it's the centre of the map pretty much. The other cities are probably better, I actually think Riften is the most visually interesting to look at if I'm being honest. I love the medieval style, the buildings overhanging each other, the dense streets and the multiple levels, but Whiterun is Whiterun. As much as it probably should be bigger as the central trading hub of Skyrim, it's iconic, and we love it for that. One of my favourite things about Skyrim that completely separates it from other games in the genre is the state of the world, the NPCs and their routines. Most worlds feel like they exist for the player. They exist to allow the player to do what needs to be done in the stories that are being told in the game. In Skyrim, however, the world just exists. It feels as though it exists independent of me, and that is one of the major triumphs of this game. I know, even when I'm in Riften, that the people in Solitude are going about their day. They're selling wares, they're speaking to one another, the Khajiit caravans are moving across to different holds. There are patrols and couriers and all sorts of things happening all across Skyrim, and I don't have to observe it for it to be happening. I know that's not true, logically that can't be possible if it's not rendered it's not happening, but Skyrim makes it feel like it is, and to an extent, it is. Things happen between loading screens upon fast travel, the world will change without your input, but it's mostly trickery, smoke and mirrors, but the way that it's done gives you this immense illusion of the world existing independent from the player, and it's truly a level of immersion I've never really seen done since. Sometimes when you start a quest, a character will say, meet me at this location. You can of course travel there and meet them, but if you wanted to, you can follow them and watch them make their way from point A to point B. They don't disappear when out of sight and reappear at the next quest marker, they actually travel across the world the same as you, and I think that's just marvellous. Every NPC has a name, a routine, a house, a job, a purpose in this world. It doesn't feel like the world belongs to you, it feels like you're living in a world that just exists because it does, and I utterly adore that. How can we talk about Skyrim without discussing the music? The music of Skyrim is legendary, from the combat tracks that play in dungeons or fights to the melodic exploration music as you traverse this huge and wonderful land, and the memorable main theme, the Elder Scrolls V spin on the iconic Elder Scrolls theme. It's all so well composed and does nothing but add to this overall wonderful experience. Living in the world of Skyrim is nothing but a joy. It's a huge part of this game. Yeah, of course you have questing, the dragons, the fighting, the politics, but just stopping to smell the roses and linger in one place or another is something that Skyrim really encourages and allows for. Taking your time to wander around a new town or village, to speak with people, explore palaces and browse markets, or to buy houses or build your own, to marry, to adopt, to live in Skyrim is a huge part of what makes the game so magical, and even all these years later, it's nailed to a T. Skyrim had two DLCs, well it had three DLCs actually, I don't know why I said two, and they act as additional quest lines pretty much that could be played whenever you so choose in a playthrough of Skyrim once they're presented to you. You could have Dragonborn be the very first thing you decide to do if you want to, although that would be a really weird character journey. Dawnguard takes us on a quest to stop a vampire menace in Skyrim. The quest has us visit new areas and entirely new realms in our quest to conquer the vampires, with also having the option to become a powerful as fuck vampire vampire, which I didn't do because I don't really want to be a vampire. The highlight of this questline though is of course Serana. She's a wonderful character, my favourite follower, and someone who makes the journey through this DLC a delight. She's always commenting on things around you, stuff happening in the story, and there are tons of dialogue options to have her tell you more about herself. I loved having her around and made sure that she remained as my companion going into Dragonborn. Oh my god, not again! <laughs> Honestly, this keeps happening because I'm trying to use the console commands to remove their armor and replace it with another piece of armor, however when they get too far away or something their clothes just vanish off their body. I don't even remember installing a new mod, I, honestly, it just must be part of the shit ton of mods that I installed to improve Skyrim right at the very start. Without realizing, I've not seen a single cock though, are there even penis mods for Skyrim? I'd google it, but I, I, uh, I don't want to. 
Dragonborn takes you to the land of Solstheim, just northeast of Skyrim, owned by Morrowind. It's such a visually interesting place that differs quite a bit from Skyrim, although there are parts covered in snow similar to Skyrim. Ravenrock is an interesting settlement, and I did have a few mods to improve it further, expanding it and adding some more detail, as well as a nice player home mod, which was very quaint. Exploring this new region only adds further diversity to an already diverse game with new people to meet, new politics to discover, and new stories to experience. The main story focuses on the very first Dragonborn, Mirak, trying to return and your quest to stop him. I honestly think this DLC works really nicely as an epilogue to Skyrim. After defeating Alduin years later, you use those skills to defeat Mirak, an even tougher challenge threatening the world. I really love Solstheim as a location too, and I love how much this DLC offers. There was also, of course, the beloved Hearthfire DLC, adding a house building mechanic. I didn't actually really touch this on my current playthrough, mainly because I had mods instead. Like I said, the LC Build Your Own Noble Home used the Hearthfire mechanics in order to have you build your very own settlement with traders and blacksmiths and a castle for you and your family to live in. It's an incredibly fun process, earning your resources, trading to gain more, making money from your town, and slowly building it up. Honestly, it's nice sometimes to enjoy the process of doing normal civilian things in games like this. Having this whole other side away from dragon slaying, monster hunting, and hero work is nice. Again, allowing you to just settle down, invest your time, and live in this immersive and inviting world. Skyrim is 10 years old, but honestly, it doesn't feel like it. The game feels like it's evolved and changed and adapted with the community as time has gone on. The game I've played for the last few months has felt like a different experience entirely to one that I played in 2011, but familiar all the same. Skyrim's purpose was to allow the player the freedom in a huge RPG sandbox, similar to the other Elder Scrolls titles, and the fact that it was so open, so free, and so untethered meant its future was too. The reason Elder Scrolls V hasn't died yet is because the way it was built encouraged it to grow. The community added to it, the community built around it, for it, enhanced things where they could. Skyrim as a base game is an incredible exercise in non-linearity and player choice. The evolution of Skyrim has been an exercise in the same thing. If you can think it, you can make it real and share it with so many others. Skyrim's concept was that the possibilities were supposed to be endless, and that anything you could see, you could touch. The world was yours to do with as you please. And ten years later, the game is exactly that, and so much more. I hope that Elder Scrolls VI can live up to the legacy Skyrim left in its wake. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but regardless of that, I'll never forget my time with the Elder Scrolls V, and I know I can always keep coming back to Skyrim. This video was sponsored by the online learning community, Skillshare. Skillshare offers classes on a bunch of different things, a lot of people in the middle loving going in and finding new ways to spend their time, and that's great to see, as well as supporting the channel with that free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and you're getting access to a ton of classes on things you might want to learn. You never know the potential career paths learning these skills could open for you. I've been using it to learn bits and pieces of After Effects that I maybe didn't know before, and it's been incredibly helpful. Also, don't forget the deal is still available to you. The first thousand people to hit the link down in the description get a one month free trial of Skillshare Premium. It's worth checking out even if you don't think it's something you'd necessarily be interested in because even just by signing up for the free trial it helps support me and also get you access to a world of creativity you might not have thought about before. As always if you do check it out with my link and decide to learn a new skill tweet the results to me or hit me up on discord I'd love to see what you've all been learning how to do using Skillshare. Thank you guys so much for tuning in watching this video, I really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts in the description on the video, and also on Skyrim as well. Let me know if there's any mods that you would recommend. Uh, like I said, the ones that I use, the guide that I use for the base will be in the description, as well as every individual mod I chose myself. So, if you want to do all of that modding, which took me a very long time, you can! It's, it's, it's not that difficult, it's just very long. Um, and honestly, I, this is my perfect Skyrim. I've, I've had so much fun playing it for the past um, couple months. It's been really, really good shit. Um, don't forget to follow me on social media and also check out my Twitch. I'm streaming on there very, very frequently. I recently just put up a video with some Twitch highlights, um, my first six months on Twitch, which I'll link in the description too and at the end screen if you want to check it out and you want to support me. It's a lot of fun. Go and give it a watch. As well as my very first time playing through Final Fantasy 1 that I made a video of and put that up on uh, my Twitch 
YouTube channel. It's Lazboy. Go and check that out as well. It's it's a really fun video. It's a good time. I have a few projects that I'm working on um, and some smaller videos that obviously we'll have in between because there's a bunch of games coming out now. It's the end of the year. Stuff's happening. Um, and we're getting closer to the advent calendar too, which I do every December where I upload every single day, um, which is going to be fun as fuck. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll have a stream sometime soon to sit down and we can come up with a, a 25 different ideas for the advent calendar. Um, but yeah, there is that. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. I won't take up any more of your time. Thank you to everybody on Patreon continuing to support. I really appreciate that. It really helps me out in making these longer, more time-consuming videos. So I really appreciate all of you guys. And I will see you all soon for something new. All right. Catch that, everybody. Bye-bye.